we basically feed into ChatGPT all the information about a product. We feed it in the primary keywords for that product. And then we ask it to generate a engaging and enticing title, bullet points, descriptions, A plus content, and it spits all that stuff out for us. Today, we are going to dive in and look at the top software and tools that I use in our Amazon wholesale business to keep things running smoothly, find new products to sell, and all that good stuff. If you want to jump over to the website, you can go to amazonseller.school and click on recommended tools and resources to take a look at the list and see all the links. Some of those will be affiliate links. So if you use those, I will get a small cut and no additional cost to you. It'll help me make more content like this. So I appreciate that. But let's go ahead and dive right into this. So first one that I have on the list is our repricing software. So when we started out, we started out using software called Be Cool, and that's B-Q-O-O-L. Starts at $25 a month as of the recording, and it works fine for uh, the basics. And you can elevate to their higher-level plans, which I believe are $100 a month, and that allows you to do faster repricing and things like that. But the $25, it's what's really enticing to new sellers, right? So it's really cheap, doesn't cost a lot of money, and you can start using it. And you need repricing software because you're not going to be want to be manually changing the prices on all of your products all the time. The prices on Amazon change by the minute. And your competitors, I can almost guarantee, are going to be using repricers. So if you're not using a repricer, you're going to be missing out on a lot of sales. So this 25 bucks a month gets you 15 minutes of repricing speed, or you can bump up to the hundred dollars a month and then it's the instant repricing. So it's repricing, you know, on the fly when things change. So that's what we started with. And I used that for quite a long time, a couple of years, I believe. And then we graduated to an app, called Sellersnap, and they're at sellersnap.io. They claim to be the most advanced AI Amazon repricer, and I have to agree, I really love their software. It's really intuitive. Their AI repricing works really well, kind of gives you a leg above other repricers that are out there. And what I really like about it as well is they've got tons of, of different filters that you can use to filter all the data from you know how many sales you've gotten recently is amazon on the listing are you not winning the buy box a certain percentage of the time is the buy box below your current minimum price and tons of other things like that including advertising they bring your advertising into it as well so you can see your profit with your advertising included. You can see your profit with returns included and lots of different information. So SellerSnap is what we use now. I definitely like it, but it's not cheap. It's very expensive. So we're paying about $800 a month. Um, they don't have their pricing on here currently, but I believe their lowest, yeah, right here, starting at $250 per month. So definitely a lot more expensive than be cool, but it's one of those things where you can kind of set it and forget it, which is really nice. So seller snap, once you are making, I would say if you're selling over a million dollars a year, probably look at graduating to seller snap for sure. So the next on the list is some of our wholesale sourcing tools that we use um, or research tools, I should say. And the first one here is analyzer.tools. 
And this is great software for taking the spreadsheet lists that you get from the brands and from the distributors of all their products, upload them into analyzer tools, which matches them to the products on Amazon. And then you've got a whole ton of different filters that you can use to be able to weed through all of the different products. And it allows you to look at ones that only certain ones that are, you know, over 20% profit, only ones that don't have Amazon on them, only ones that have five or more reviews, uh, only ones that the sales rank over the last 90 days is below 100,000, et cetera, et cetera. So it allows you to whittle down those giant lists and look at just the products that are potentially good ones for you to buy. So we use this on all of the brands that we, or all of the accounts that we open, all the brands, all the distributors. So it's definitely a critical tool that we use. Uh, pricing right now is not too bad. It's, I believe, like 50 bucks a month. Let's see. They are, uh, well, it starts at $39 a month for the desktop version or $50 a month for the web version. Uh, we have the web pro version, which is $59 a month and gets you uh, some more advanced uh, filters and then also what's called the deep scan, which just finds more products. So $59 a month is the one you're going to want to get and use that to go through those lists that you get from suppliers and brands. Um, Helium 10 and Jungle Scout. We used to use Jungle Scout. We switched to Helium 10 only because the uh, PPC people that we used and the, um, the agency that we were using for a little while, they used Helium 10, so we switched to Helium 10. But Jungle Scout, Helium 10, very similar. We essentially use their tools to check and see what the estimated sales will be on a product. That's the basics part of their Chrome plugin. And then Helium 10 and Jungle Scout, they also, if you get into the Amazon wholesale exclusive route where you're getting exclusive agreements and in exchange you are optimizing listings, we utilize all of the other tools for the keyword research, listing optimization and such that come along in Helium 10 and in Jungle Scout. So our optimization team that we have uses Helium 10 all the time when they're optimizing listings. And then our product sourcing team uses it all the time when they're trying to get guesstimations on how many products or how many units a product is selling. Now, if you don't want to pay for Helium 10 or Jungle Scout, Jungle Scout has a really cool uh, Jungle Scout sales estimator. If you search for it, you'll find it in the search. And it's basically a free tool that you can use to get the estimated number of sales. It's not as easy as using the plugin, but the plugin is paid, right? This is free. So if you're starting out, check out the Jungle Scout Amazon sales estimator looks works uh, really well for analyzing and finding out how many units uh, products sell. So for example, if we punch 100,000 in here for a sales rank, enter, we're in the United States and we're in appliances, estimated sales, no data available because that's not a good category that sells a lot. Let's try grocery and gourmet food. So 30 units sales per month at 100,000 sales rank in grocery and gourmet food. So definitely a nice tool. Um, but once you, you know, you're growing, get the Jungle Scout or Helium 10, use that plugin, and then, of course, use their software for optimizing listings if you get to doing that. Next up here is Keepa. Keepa is one of the tools you need to get pretty much immediately. Uh, you get their Chrome plugin and install it. And then you sign up and buy their data package. 
uh, which is about $15, $16 a month for that. And Keepa is just an amazing, an amazing tool. And I've got the video up here. And it just allows you to look at a product and get tons of great information. From if Amazon has been on the listing before to what the historical sales rank is, what the historical price is, how many sellers there's been, what the review growth is, and all kinds of other great information. This is a must-have that you need immediately when you start trying to sell wholesale or private label, really, on Amazon. It just provides so much good information. Our sourcing team uses it daily, if not hourly, for sure. So Keepa is an awesome tool to use. I've got a video on that on the website. If you want to check that out, uh, click on over to that, search for Keepa, and pull up that video. Next up is RevSeller. RevSeller is awesome because if you go to Amazon, and I'm going to pull up Amazon.com here, and you go to a product, it's going to show you a nice tool right at the top. So you can see what the possible uh, profit is for you on that product. It gives you lots of really good information right at the top. So it puts this box right at the top. It's showing me the sales rank. It's showing me the 90-day average price that it's sold at, the ranking as well for the last 90 days. And then it's also showing me, which is really nice, the parent ASIN, if it's a child, if it's a variation how much Amazon is thinking that it weighs, what the prep size is for the FBA prep. So this one that we're looking at here is a large standard, but you'd be able to see you know, very quickly how much that product's gonna cost you to ship and store. Shows you the dimensions of the product that Amazon has entered. I like to see this information too, because if I'm looking at a product and let's say it's like a, uh, fingernail clipper, right? It's small, but Amazon says that it's a pound. Obviously, we need to do a cubic scan on that product, which you can request with Amazon, have them remeasure that product once you send it in, and they'll decrease the fees for you. Uh, shows you the model number, uh, and if you enter in your buy cost, so let's say our buy cost on this thing was 20 bucks, and it's selling for $46.00. Our ROI on that would be 61%. Our profit is $12.15. Our profit margin is 26%. Down below here further, it shows you what the lowest FBM price is, the lowest FBA price, who ha what the current buy box price is, if Amazon's on here, what their price is. And then this one is critical. How many other sellers are within... 3% of the buy box. And you can change that percentage to 1%, 2%, 3%. We keep it at 3% to be more conservative. But that tells you, if you were to sell this product, how many people would you potentially be sharing the buy box for? Now, this one is saying zero. And that's zero additional in addition to who has the buy box currently. So that means you'd be the second seller on this listing. Well, actually, there are no FBA sellers on this one, so you would be the first. But if there was one on here, it would still show zero because it's saying in addition to the current person in the buy box. But that gives you an idea then. So let's say that one product was selling 30 we found in the Jungle Scout estimator. And we looked here and it said there's three people in or two people close within 3% of the buy box. And we're going to be the third then we'd be sharing that with three people so we could potentially get 10 sales per month. So really awesome tool that you can use. It costs, I believe, $100 for the year. Uh, so an essential tool that I would recommend getting right away at the beginning as well. 
Next up, the one that I like here is the DS Amazon Quick View Extended plugin. And I say extended because they have a basic version and an extended version. Now I'm gonna search on Amazon for a dog treat here so that you can see what this plugin looks like. The extended plugin gives you this nice box at the top of every search. And up here, I can do a filter to start stripping out products based on their bestseller ranking, their price range, number of reviews. So for example, if I wanted to, on this search results, only show me products that are above $20, have more than 20 reviews, have more than two FBA sellers, and have a minimum review rating of 3.5, and then I wanna hide any sponsored products, and I wanna hide any products that are sold by Amazon. Now when I scroll down on the search results, all of the products disappeared on the search results except for the ones that match that filter. And in this case, uh, there is only a handful of ones that meet that criteria. So if you're doing sourcing, it allows you to really quickly go through search results and find products that you could potentially sell and not have to manually dig through all of these different products. So that's another one that I love. Our sourcing people use that all the time. Next up is a nice one called IP Alert. And what that does is if you stumble upon a listing where the brand is known to submit IP complaints or intellectual property complaints, which I know the brand Kong does. So I'm gonna click on one of their products and that should pop up for us. It pops up with this nice alert box that says IP alert, this brand is known to file IP complaints. So if our sourcing specialists see that, they know that that is probably a product we wanna stay away from, unless it's one that their listings are really bad, and then we still might reach out to them to try to get an exclusive agreement and offer to optimize their listings and improve their sales and be the only seller of that product. So those ones can actually be gold. If they're filing IP complaints, stopping other people from selling and you can get them to let you be the exclusive seller and optimize their listing, that can be gold sometimes. Um, but a really cool plugin, it's not foolproof because they are basing this off of a database of IP complaints that have been submitted to them. People have to provide proof that they had an IP complaint from this company. Um, but it's definitely helpful. The plugin is not that expensive. The current price on that is, let's see, loading up the page. The price is 99 bucks a year or $200 lifetime. So worth it, in my opinion, to kind of help yourself to make sure you're not getting products that you're potentially gonna get IP complaints on. The next one up here is inventory management. Uh, currently, we use a software called the Restock Pro. It's been okay for us. It's worked. Uh, it's kind of a pain as you grow. When you're small, it worked well, but we've outgrown it. And there's a lot of things that it doesn't work well with. Like there's no API connection, which is what's really driving us crazy. And that's a, a programming interface to connect to other softwares. So we have no way to do that. So we're downloading spreadsheets all the time and creating little apps to repurpose those spreadsheets and load them into other softwares and things like that. Um, but when you're small, it works well. There's a lots of other ones out there like So Stocked works really good. A lot of people use Inventory Planner uh, as well. So there's lots of different ones out there. I can't really recommend this one anymore but uh, it works when you're starting out and you're small. Um, next one on the list here is my refund guy. So Amazon loses your products 
they don't pay you back for products that they lose or products that are returned that are damaged or maybe they don't receive all your products. That happens all the time when you ship products in. They don't receive everything. Apps like My Refund Guy, you set them up and you can kind of forget about them. You connect them into your Amazon and then they are going to be looking for all the different ways that Amazon can, air quotes, forget to give you money back. And that happens a lot. We literally get back thousands of dollars every month and they get paid on a percentage of what they get back for you. I believe the base percentage is 25%. As you grow, you can negotiate a lower rate on that. So always ask if you can get a lower rate, especially as you get bigger. When you're small, that's probably not going to happen. But you can essentially look at it as free money that they're getting back for you that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And like I said, I literally have gotten thousands of dollars back from them. I'm going to go ahead and log in here really quick and we'll see what that actually has come out to. So here is our dashboard in there. So you can see total recovered is $55,000 that they've recovered, $7,000 that are awaiting Amazon's decision, $98 in the pipeline, 24 that we have to, you know, do some kind of action on submitted invoice is the big one. Um, get an invoice on to prove that we purchased the inventory. But we just signed up for them sometime last year, I believe. Before then, we used another company. And th so this 55000 is just in like the last year or so. Let's see, the last three months, they got back $3,000. So in the thousands every month that they're getting back for us. And we're doing about $4 million this year. So as you grow it can become a significant chunk of money that you're getting back. All right, so next up is ChatGPT. And unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know about ChatGPT and the AI bonanza that is going on out there right now. Uh, we use ChatGPT quite a lot now in our optimization services. So our optimization team is using it all the time. So what we use it for is we basically feed into ChatGPT all the information about a product. We feed it in the primary keywords for that product. And then we ask it to generate a engaging and enticing title, bullet points, descriptions, a plus content and it spits all that stuff out for us. Now, it's not always perfect on the first attempt, but you learn how to coerce ChatGPT into giving you what you want. Like for example, it might spit some information out and say, and it's okay, right? But maybe it's it's like written like a research paper. So you say, hey, write this in a 10th grade reading level, an eighth grade reading level, a ninth grade reading level. And it will spit back the content in those reading levels. And you can keep playing with it. Maybe write this in a more happy tone. Write this in a more intellectual way. And it will keep coming back with that content in different ways for you until you get it the way you really want it. And it just works wonders. If you're working with a copywriting specialist, they can create the copy, put it into ChatGPT and say, hey, give me suggestions to improve this copy or rewrite this copy to be more engaging or rewrite this copy to get more clicks or more conversions and see what it comes back with. And it will, no matter what level you are on on copywriting, it's going to help improve your writing. Now, remember, it's not perfect. You're going to want to critique what it comes back with and make sure the information is correct. But it works wonders. The other way that we use it is our graphic designers, surprisingly to a lot of people. Our graphic designers will input things like, give me 10 ideas for lifestyle images of a dog bone that is for aggressive 
chewing dogs. And ChatGPT will come back with 10 ideas, some good, some not so good, of lifestyle images that they could create. And then you could say something like, create the lifestyle images to help increase conversions on Amazon.com. And it will give you that set with that in mind. And it just helps your graphic designers who sometimes may not have a lot of knowledge about the topic that they're creating graphics for. And it works really well to give them ideas so that they can get a starting point. So ChatGPT is awesome. We use it a lot. Uh, Google has one as well called Bard. That would probably work the same, but uh, we've started using ChatGPT. Works really good and we use it all the time. I use it too for, you know, getting rewriting emails, rewriting content. You know, this description here about ChatGPT, I wrote in there my thoughts about ChatGPT and then I said rewrite this in a short paragraph at a 10th grade reading level for our website recommending ChatGPT and it spit back this content that is on my website. Now, I fed it with the basics of what I wanted it to say and how I wanted it to say it, and then it spit back the uh, paragraph that I now have on my website. Uh, and it works really good for all that. You can use it to rewrite sales emails as well. I've done that with emails. I'm not sure exactly how to reply to this, so I write what I'm thinking, and then I put it in chat GPT and say, this is our email conversation. This is what I'm thinking to reply. Rewrite my reply to make it more likely that they are going to allow us to be get an exclusive agreement with them. And it's worked really well. What it comes back with is like, oh yeah, that's a lot better than what I was going to write. So lots of cool ways to use ChatGPT. Um, freelancers and virtual assistants. Online Jobs is the platform that we use to hire all of our VAs in the Philippines, the virtual assistants. So this is the teams that I'm using to source products, the teams that I'm using, or the people I should say, that I'm using to create the teams for the optimization team, for the sourcing team. And I just post the job posting on there and I get tons of resumes very quickly. Now, one tip that, because you are gonna get a lot of resumes, is I like to put towards the end of the job posting, in the subject of your application, give me the answer to who was the first president of the United States, or something like that, where the answer is gonna be something that's not changing because then when you're scrolling through all the people who applied, you're gonna see George Washington, George Washington, pick me, I'm the best virtual assistant, I'm the best sorcerer, George Washington, George Washington, you should hire me, George Washington. The ones that don't say George Washington, just archive, archive, archive. They didn't obviously read the entire job description, so it helps you weed through uh, the people who are maybe just bulk applying to a ton of different jobs. So we use them to hire all of our virtual assistants. The next one here is FreeUp, which now has a different name, I believe. Uh, nope, still FreeUp, FreeUp.net. And they are a an agency for finding, or a staffing agency for finding freelancers. So we used these in the beginning or use them in the beginning when I wasn't as familiar with hiring virtual assistants. And they go out, you put your job posting up, they go out and find you three or four qualified applicants that they believe are qualified. So they're doing all the weeding through the applications for you, right? And then they send those three back, you do an interview, you pick the final person that you wanna hire, you hire them through FreeUp, and you pay them an extra dollar or two per hour to hire this person through FreeUp. So it's a great way to do it if you're not familiar with hiring. And then once you get more familiar with interviewing and hiring 
then you can go on and start using onlinejobs.ph more for your hiring. So definitely check them out if you want a little more easy way to find an agent or a, find a an a sourcing agent or somebody for your optimization team, things like that. Um, Fiverr is another one that I use. Uh, Fiverr is fantastic for one-off tasks. So let's say you don't have a, a graphic designer on your team. Jump over to Fiverr and find a graphic designer that has good reviews, good ratings. Tell them what you need and they're going to create those nice lifestyle graphics. Or maybe you need a logo. They can create a logo. Or you can see here, I used this guy to create the intro to my podcast. One-off tasks are the kind of things that I like to do on Fiverr. and Because you're not going to necessarily build up a really good relationship. I do keep a certain uh, different people that I've worked with in my favorites so that I can keep going back to them. So you build a little bit of a relationship there. But it's mostly for those one-off tasks that I'm using Fiverr for. So definitely check them out. And if you're not familiar, Fiverr has two R's. So it's five and then rr.com. Next up is Time Doctor. Time Doctor is the software that we use to track the working time for all of our VAs in the Philippines and outside of the Philippines as well. Our developer that we have that's developing our inventory management software because I like it, like I said, we outgrew Restock, Restock Pro. We're developing our own. Um, so our developer uses that as well. But essentially, you invite them to Time Doctor. They install an app on their computer. And when they want to track their time, they start it. And when they're done working, they stop it. Um, you can set it to automatically time out if they're not doing anything for a certain period of time. You can set it to see screenshots every minute, every few minutes, or a continuous video of what they're doing. Um, so not only is it good for tracking their time, but it's also good to maybe help them do their job better. So if I'm concerned that somebody maybe isn't doing things the way or the best way, I might turn it on continuous video, look at that video, and then uh, be able to make suggestions of ways that they can better utilize their time. So the pricing on that currently is for the basic is Five ninety per month per user, and the standard eight forty per user. So I believe, I think we're on the basic, if I remember right. Um, so it's not super cheap, but not super expensive either. And it's a way to keep track of your VAs uh, and uh, see what they're working on and how many hours they're putting in for you. Next on the list here is tax jar. This is taxing or taxing, excuse me, taxes, your sales tax software. And now with Amazon, you don't really have to track your sales tax because they're doing it all and remitting it for you for pretty much all of the states now. Um, I'm not an accountant or a financial advisor or anything, so talk to your accountant on that. But you're going to, at a minimum, have to file a $0 sales tax in your home state, wherever your business is set up. And so tax jar is what we use to do that. I believe it's $25 that we pay uh, per filing period. Um, so it's $20 per month, and then it's $25 to file the taxes for you. Um, because I don't like the government. I don't like messing with government stuff. When I do it, it just angers me and it frustrates me because usually their interfaces are really horrible. And so for 20 bucks a month and then $25 for filing, I let TaxJar handle all of that for me so I don't have to mess with it and just get frustrated at the government taxing me too much, right? So TaxJar is really good for that. Um, accounting, I don't have that here on the list. I'll have to add it. For our bookkeeping, we use Accounting We Will Go is the name of the company. 
And so they do all of our bookkeeping for us. I believe we're paying them $600 per month at our level. So if you're just starting out, it'll probably be cheaper, but they do a good job for us. Uh, they give us our um, profit and loss statement and our balance sheet every month so we can see if we're profitable and which direction we're going. As I've said before, knowing your numbers is critical, of course. So getting a bookkeeper, do that sooner rather than later. And then our accountant, we just use a, a local accountant here in Tampa, Florida. And I recommend you probably do the same. Find a local accountant who's familiar with e-commerce e and get set up with them to do your tax accounting every year. Um, next up here is SiteGround. We use SiteGround for all of our website hosting and creating our professional emails. You're going to want, uh, once you're growing, a value-add website. And they think I am a robot. So the computer is asking me if I'm a robot to get through to SiteGround. So that's always fun. Um, but SiteGround is where we host our value-added website, where we're talking about you know all the great things we can do for the brands, optimizing their listings, helping them control map, all that good stuff. Check out my video on creating a value-added website if you want to do that. Um, but then even more important in the beginning is getting you a professional email address. Like when my emails go out for Amazon Seller School, it's not Todd Amazon School at gmail.com. It's Todd W at Amazon Seller dot school. Right. So it looks professional. It sounds professional. If you're sending emails and communicating with a Gmail address, Yahoo address, Hotmail, you don't look professional. So get a professional email. Check out my video on how to set up your business email in Gmail for free and use the Gmail platform with your business email address. That's what we do and use that for our business email addresses, and it works really well. So check them out. Um, it's pretty cheap, as low as you know $2.99 a month right now. After the promotion, it's like $14.99 uh, for hosting an email, but it's something that's critical that you need for your business. Um, and let's see, Boomerang for Gmail. I love Boomerang for Gmail. It's one of the reasons we use Gmail. Boomerang allows you to schedule emails to come back. So let's say you send an email to a supplier. You can say, hey, Boomerang, if they don't reply to me within three business days, bring that email back to my inbox so I don't forget about it. Or you can schedule emails to send later. It uh, works really well for that, but it helps me to stay organized in my email and not forget about emails that I sent and maybe I don't get a reply to and I don't want to forget about it. So awesome little plugin that you can put in Google Chrome for Gmail. They have a version for Outlook as well. Um, looks like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Opera, all the different browsers have it. Uh, but works really well. So definitely check that out if you're using Gmail. Um, next up here, and I believe the last one on the list is the Capital One Spark business card is what I use to earn 2% cash back on all the inventory that I buy. So I literally get back between two to $3,000 cash back every single month just off of the inventory that we buy. And Surprisingly, a lot of suppliers will let you pay with a credit card. Now, sometimes I try to negotiate discounts or extended net 60, net 45 terms if I don't pay with a credit card and I pay maybe with a check or an ACH transfer. Um, but if they don't have that and I just pay with a credit card, it's great to get the cash back. And make sure you always have a separate credit card just for your business. Do not be using and intermingling your personal bot purchases with your business. That'll drive your bookkeeper crazy. It'll drive your accountant crazy. And if you ever get audited, it will mess you up with the IRS. If you ever get sued, it could allow a person to 
pierce through your business entity and get to your personal stuff as well. So you want to keep everything separate. Again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an accountant, any of that good stuff. So talk to your lawyer and accountant and bookkeeper about that. But that's what we do over here. So those are all the tools that I am using in my business daily, weekly, monthly, all the tools that I find critical to manage our business. So again, jump on over to amazonseller.school, click on recommended tools and resources, and you can get a list of all those. Use those affiliate links. That would be awesome. I'll get a small cut and no additional cost to you and help me make more videos and podcasts for you guys out there and hopefully help you build your Amazon empire. So with that, this is Todd Welch signing off. Happy selling, everybody. This has been another episode of the Amazon Seller School podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow Amazon seller. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.